and welcome to Switch On, the show that aims to highlight some of the best bits of Ipswich and reconnect locals with the place they call home, as well as bring new interest into a region that is brimming with a rich cultural heritage on the outskirts of its capital city, Brisbane. With over 6,000 well-maintained historical sites in its locality, the city itself bravely attempts to attract new developments into its boundaries while blatantly refusing to remove the very buildings that helped shape the town. They instead find creative ways to breathe new life into the old to generate something new. One such building is the Walter Burley Griffin Incinerator Facility on Milford Street. And joining us to share his story is the president of the Little, Ipswich Little Theatre Society, Jim Orr. Welcome to the show, Jim. Hi, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. So could you please tell us who Walter Burley Griffin is? Walter Burley Griffin was lucky enough, or well, competent enough to win the prize to design Canberra. When Australia was first formed as a Commonwealth, Sydney and Melbourne wanted both to be capitals, but they came to an agreement to design a new capital. He was the person who won the award to design Australia's capital city, Canberra, he also ran a business called the Reverberator Incinerator Company, which uh, designed incinerators to use in uh, municipalities, there's the beautiful word, that uh, needed to dispose of their rubbish. Oh, so um, when did the incinerator facility begin to take form as a theatre and whose idea was that? Well, it was originally uh, constructed in 1926 and operated until the late 50s as an incinerator. In the 60s it was desi uh, about to be destroyed, uh, pulled down because it had become derelict. Uh, a person from the Arts Council in Ipswich uh, identified that the building could be possibly transformed into a theatre and a gentleman called Ian Puller was the engineer who designed the construction to be able to for the building to be turned into a theatre. And since the 60s, we have been in this, this building. In fact, our first play was performed in, nine, in uh, 60 years ago to this year. Oh, wow. So um, I hear that an incinerator building is small. What kind of plays do you fit in that space? We can fit almost anything in there. We've done in, in everything from Shakespeare to uh, two-handed plays. We can fit five different scenes onto the stage at any one time. Usually we ask audiences in theatre to suspend disbelief. So we want you to believe in what you're watching on stage and audiences tend to do that at live theatre. Oh, wow. And how does the whole theatre contribute to the community of Ipswich? The Ipswich Little Theatre contributes to Ipswich in many ways. It has uh, a, a number of uh, subgroups. Well, one being S Troop, which is S for special, which looks after people with disabilities of all ranges. There's uh, anywhere from 30 to 35 uh, people with disabilities. There's also a junior theatre group. There's also a teenage theatre group. There's also a, a senior group that does pantomimes for schools and for children. Oh, wow, that's so fascinating. Thank you so much for that information. Um, and also congratulations on your play Bubbles, winning the best play in the One Act Festival last weekend. Mm, it was lovely. We've been travelling around South East Queensland uh, performing in a One Act Play Festival circuit. We've won awards uh, either for acting or for the play itself in almost every festival. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Mm. Thank you very much, Jim. Thank you. For more information on the Ipswich Little Theatre Association and the plays they put on for the Ipswich community, visit www.ilt.org.au. Now, after 192 years, Ipswich has understandably undergone many modifications, but not all changes to its makeup have been intentional. Ipswich has seen its fair share of natural disasters, and without a doubt, one of the most devastating to the city and its community was the 2011 floods. In January 2011, an estimated one-third of Ipswich went underwater after floods saw the Ipswich and Bremer River peak at a height of 19.4 metres, leaving over 1,100 people to seek shelter in evacuation centres after more than 3,000 homes were inundated. 
300 elderly people were removed from the Bremer Waters aged care home and over 42 streets in the Ipswich region were blocked by the murky brown floodwaters. In the middle of Ipswich, rows of shops and buildings had their awnings peeking out above the floodwaters which took several days to recede, leaving the city itself with over $100 million worth of damage. The aftermath of the floods saw many local businesses unable to reopen their doors, one of which was the popular bowling alley in Bundamba, which went completely under, ruining the lanes beyond repair. Two months after the floods, Tenpin owner Dean Margiolis came to the painful realisation that he would be unable to reopen the bowling alley after his landlord evoked a clause in his contract and evicted him from the premises. Eight years on, and after a number of failed attempts by a council to lure a bowling centre back to Ipswich, then-Mayor Andrew Antonioli struck a deal late last year to open an eight-lane bowling alley in the Riverlink shopping centre. We sent our USQ correspondents down to check it out. everyone to do between the arcade and the bowling the bowling lanes. Um, everyone seems to have a really good time here. Everyone's very interested in um, starting up a bowling league. It's something we get a lot of interest in. We're sort of looking at establishing that in the future. Everyone sort of spoke to us about how they used to do it at um, the Bundamba one before it was flooded. So we get a lot of stories about that and just a lot of regular people come in um, during the day while school's going and sort of um, come every week to and they really enjoy it. We're very busy on the school holidays. Um, it just sort of gives the kids something to do and parents and yeah, a bit of family time. It would just be great to have a good, fun family environment for people to come in and sort of catch up as well um, and just sort of hang out. iPlay Ipswich is now open, so get your friends together and head over to the Riverlink Shopping Centre to check it out for yourself. Now, if music is more your style, we caught up with Callan and Russell, host of the popular Phoenix radio program Emerge, a show that brings you the latest news on all things local music. Let's take a look. Hey guys, it's Callan and Russell from Phoenix Radio's Emerge, which is showcasing you the best new music coming out of Queensland. And one of Queensland's most exciting festivals is just around the corner with big sounds soon to be hitting Brisbane from the 3rd to the 6th of September. The Big Sound Festival and Conference will be bringing a diverse mix of 150 artists from all kinds of genres and backgrounds right to your doorstep. And here at Emerge, we'd love to help recommend just a small number of those and uh, some of our three quite favourite Queensland artists that you need to be checking out during Big Sound. Calmos first. First up is Semantics, the Brisbane punk rock quartet following the deserved success of their sophomore EP, If You're Not Alright, have been one of the two recipients of the Triple J Unearthed Art. Oh competition to get on onto Big Sound. Big, big competition. Yeah, huge, huge competition and very deserved as, and in my opinion, at least one of the best live bands in Brisbane at the moment. Huge energy, huge passion, and we can't recommend them enough. Next up we have First Page, which was a solo project once led by David Versace, which is now a collective of seven of the most talented members just around with uh, individually them serving up some of the best music found in Brisbane. Their live performance just exudes some insatiable grooves and they've just formed this entirely DIY approach and passion. And the results just really speak for themselves. They have some fantastic imagery, beautiful melodies and a truly unique experience to just get lost in. First Page are an unmissable act to be catching this big sound. Mm. Next up is Halley with lush indie pop instrumentals, backed by an incredible band with two other absolute powerhouse vocalists behind her. She's, yeah, it's an, inc an incredible pop quartet that is another one of the deserved winners of the Triple J on Earth Big Sound competition. Incredible, incredible harmonies, incredible pop musicality. 
that she's definitely another one of the unmissable artists coming up at Big Sound this year. And um, probably my biggest recommendation of the bunch is one of my favourite artists yeah. in the scene, Nerve, the N to the E to the RVE, who's producing some of the best in Australian hip hop at the moment, and he's gearing up to leave more than just an impression during Big Sound. He's already performed Groovy in the Moo, Falls Festival, Big Pineapple, and selling out a headlining show across Australia. I don't think Big Sound is really ready for Nerve. I don't think so. He released a 2018 album, Sober, that's about to be followed up with an EP called Mama's Boy, and he's just going off on three singles this year already, which is bound to create a couple tsunamis when you catch him at Big Sound. So don't miss out on one of the biggest acts coming from Brisbane. Also from Brisbane is... Next up is Psych Prodigy, Psycho, fronted by Sasha McLeod. Incredibly, incredibly only 17 years old, she released a debut album last year and quickly followed that up with Tamed Grief, her latest single, and deservedly is among some of the some of the incredible Australian artists at this year's Big Sound. Backed by an incredible band featuring the absolute godsend. Shout out James. Yeah, shout out James, of course. <laughs> There's, if you like psychedelic or even soul music, you can't miss Psycho at this year's Big Sound. And our final recommendation of the bunch is the wonderful Gold Coast based Dana, who has already been a favourite of the likes of TK Mazda and has over a million streams on Spotify of just two singles alone. She's a self-produced rising star with a soothing electronic sound that crafts this, this unique and relatable attention-grabbing tracks, tracks all around. Uh, with only two tracks released, you're bound to be doing yourself a favour by catching more from this awesome artist at Big Sound. So make sure you head down. There's a whole lot more to see. And we can't wait to hear what your favourites are coming up on the 3rd to the 6th of September. For more information on Big Sound, on live music and gigs, make sure you hit up Emerge every Monday night, 7 to 9 p.m. on Phoenix Radio, 11, 9, 7 a.m. and Digital Radio. Not you. We'll be releasing the second episode of our podcast soon enough, so make sure you catch up to the first episode, which featured Jeremy Neal, Semantics, Animal House, and a lot more. You can also find that on Emerge's Spotify, YouTube, and SoundCloud pages now. If you're a budding filmmaker, then the Ipswich Film Festival for Youth is a great way to make a short film and maybe even win a prize. Here is the IFI team to tell you us more about the festival. Hi, I'm Brittany. Hey, I'm Cara. And I'm David. The 2019 Ipswich City Council's Ipswich Film Festival for Youth short film competition for kids aged 7 to 25 years is now open. This year's competition has been split into three age groups, 7 to 11 years, 12 to 17 years and 18 to 25 years. Categories in each age group has been designed with the age of each entrant in mind. For our littler filmmakers aged 7 to 11 years, we have three categories. Share it can be done easily with a phone. Single shoot is a simple hit and record and shoot away stopping at 60 seconds. No editing required. And silent film allows kids to play on the black and white silent film theme. Our middle and senior school filmmakers have three categories. Documentary, where they can play on the theme of what our future might be. Sci-fi, with all things sci-fiction. And school's entry for school groups. Our 18 to 25 years, they also have three categories. Documentary, where they can play on the theme of what they feel the future may look like. Music video using the track Evolution from Ben Sound. And an animation stop motion category. There's also a prize of a GoPro Black for the overall winner of each age group. Three to be given away in total. For 2019, our entrance films will be shown on the big screen at Rebel Domain, Saturday, October 19th. Screening and the IFI Awards will kick off from 2pm for the 7 to 11 year olds, 4pm for the 12 to 17 year olds and 6.30 for the 18 to 25 year olds. USQ Media students will be on site as a presenting partner and will run the day as a live studio event. Springfield Markets will also be supporting the event at Rebel Domain with a great selection of market and food stalls. Competition closes Friday, September 20. For more details on the competition, including the competition theme and T's and C's, visit the website ipswitch.qld.gov.au forward slash iffy. Well, that's all the time we have for our debut episode of Switch On. If you have any stories you'd like us to look into, you can reach us on Twitter via the hashtag switchonstories or on Facebook at switchonstories. I'm Annie Pets and you've been switched on.